In the heart of Southeast Asia, where gleaming skyscrapers and the promise of prosperity define the landscape, a silent struggle unfolds, one that imperils the very foundation of one of the world's wealthiest nations. Unbeknownst to many, Singapore, a beacon of affluence and progress, grapples with an invisible adversary, a catastrophe threatening to erase its existence. Beneath the majestic skyline, a chilling truth resonates in the hearts of its people. The city-state is sinking. As the specter of an unprecedented climate crisis looms large, Singapore finds itself on the front lines of a battle against a rising sea, a relentless force that endangers not just iconic landmarks, but the very homes and futures of its citizens. This is the untold story of a bustling metropolis celebrated for its economic prowess, now standing at the precipice. In the face of this existential threat, Singaporeans confront a stark question. Is their beloved island sinking beneath the waves? Regardless of the answer, Singapore refuses to leave its fate to chance. Enter the audacious mega-project, a colossal 800-hectare man-made island, a lifeline christened the Long Island. In this documentary, we uncover this daring endeavor, exploring how it may serve as the key to Singapore's survival amidst the rising tide of an uncertain future. Welcome to the unfolding tale of resilience, innovation, and the relentless pursuit of a nation determined to overcome the encroaching forces of nature. Picture this, a world where temperatures have already spiked by nearly 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. It's not just a distant threat, it's our present reality. To dodge the catastrophic bullet of climate change, humanity faces a daunting mission restraining global warming to a 1.5 degree Celsius limit. As global warming pushes ocean temperatures upward, the consequences unravel like a domino effect. The expanding warmth causes seawater to swell, birthing rising sea levels that put coastal regions on the front lines of the climate crisis. But that's not the only battlefront. The icy behemoths of Greenland and Antarctica are melting at an alarming pace, channeling more water towards the equator for nations like Singapore. Perched precariously on low-lying terrain, this spells trouble. The alarming findings of a study conducted by Nanyang Technological University's Earth Observatory of Singapore further reiterates the risks. If global temperatures soar by more than 4 degrees Celsius due to rampant greenhouse gas emissions, sea levels around Singapore could surge by a staggering 1.37 meters by year, 2150. This forecast isn't merely a worst-case scenario, it's a wake-up call rooted in the latest carbon dioxide emission projections. For a country where 30% of the land lies less than 5 meters above the mean sea level, the ramifications are profound. Imagine a future where low-lying coastal regions and reclamation projects face a constant threat of flooding. The Meteorological Service Singapore and Singapore's National Water Agency, the PUB, paint a grim picture highlighting the vulnerability of densely populated areas and critical infrastructure to the merciless advance of rising waters. Zooming in on the cityscape, iconic landmarks like the Marina Bay waterfront, adorned with luxury malls and casinos, and towering structures housing financial giants like DBS and Standard Chartered become perilously exposed. Even a moderate increase in sea levels could translate into staggering financial losses. One of the key contributors to Singapore's economy, Jurong Island, faces a similar threat. Home to oil and petrochemical operations of industry giants like Shell and ExxonMobil, the vulnerability of this vital hub amplifies the stakes. Clearly, unlike other small island nations grappling with rising seas, Singapore stands out, not just for its vulnerability, but for its economic prowess. The sheer value of every square meter here is astronomical, this isn't just a climate crisis, it's a ticking time bomb for a nation more susceptible to sea level rise than almost any other on the planet. Septics of the dangers of climate change need not look further than East Coast Park, Singapore's largest recreational sanctuary perched on the southeastern coast. This low-lying area, a haven for beachgoers and nature enthusiasts, has borne witness to the tangible impacts of climate change. In February 2018, a confluence of rain and an extraordinary high tide submerged portions of the park in water, a tide reaching 3.3 meters, surpassing the typical 3-meter levels 
triggered the overflow of seawater from canal banks. Fast forward to January 2023, and the deja vu struck again, overflowing canals and ponding unfolded after heavy rainfall and during high tides, with tide heights peaking at 3.5 meters according to tide tables. The irrefutable evidence of East Coast Park facing the brunt of the changing climate underscores the urgency for Singapore to fortify its future. The danger is palpable, and the nation stands at a crossroads to succumb or to strategize for survival. Enter the bold vision unveiled in November 2023, an ambitious plan to reclaim approximately 800 hectares along the East Coast, a bold undertaking known as the Long Island. This artificial island, twice the size of downtown Marina Bay, is a calculated move in the chess game against climate change. Long Island, stretching from Marina East to Tanamera, comprises three extensive tracts of reclaimed land, strategically positioned at a higher level than the existing coastline. The concept isn't just about land reclamation, it's a comprehensive strategy to project coastal protection seawards. And in doing so, this audacious endeavor seeks to reshape the landscape in front of East Coast Park. The reclaimed tracks, forming a continuous defensive line along the coast, promise to thwart the advancing sea levels. The innovative design incorporates a new reservoir equipped with centralized tidal gates and pumping stations akin to the formidable Marina Barrage. These engineering marvels are poised to regulate water levels in the reservoir, ensuring a dual impact, mitigating flood risks in the East Coast area and bolstering Singapore's water resilience with a new source of freshwater supply. As technical studies into Long Island kick off in 2024, Singapore's strategic response to climate change takes shape. A nation accustomed to molding its coastal destiny, evident in the historic East Coast Reclamation Scheme of 1966, now braces for a new chapter. This time, it's not just about reclaiming land, it's about reclaiming a future in the face of an unpredictable climate. But is constructing a man-made island the sole remedy for Singapore's battle against the rising seas? While Long Island emerges as a promising prospect, it's not the only card in the deck. In the quest for coastal fortification, Singapore explored an alternative strategy, a formidable seawall rising up to three meters along the entire East Coast Park waterfront, extending from Marina East to Tanamera. This robust defense system would be further fortified by 12 tidal gates and pumping stations strategically placed along existing outlet drains, a sophisticated bulwark against encroaching tides and rainwater deluges during high tide. However, the proposal encounters a critical challenge, the clash with the current use of East Coast Park for recreational purposes. Implementation of this coastal protection solution would hamper beach access and disrupt park activities during construction. The extensive infrastructure required, including tidal gates and pumping stations, would devour approximately 15 football fields worth of precious park space, rendering the solution impractical. On the other hand, Long Island offers a more comprehensive and forward-looking resolution. It not only shields the East Coast from rising sea levels, but serves as a dual-purpose marvel. Imagine adding a sprawling 20 kilometers of new coastal and waterfront parks, effectively tripling the length of recreational havens along the coastline. Long Island isn't just a shield, it's a canvas for exciting lifestyle opportunities and recreational spaces, aligning with the evolving needs and desires of generations of Singaporeans. The potential benefits extend beyond recreation. This reclaimed oasis could house a mix of private and public properties, accommodating up to 60,000 new homes, addressing the pressing demands of a growing population. Unsurprisingly, Long Island is an urban planner's dream, seamlessly integrating residential properties with green and blue spaces, fostering a harmonious blend of living, recreation, and nature. Moreover, Long Island could become a potential blueprint for the future. The success of this project would offer valuable insights into redeveloping other vulnerable parts of Singapore, fortifying them against the rising seas. Long Island could potentially be split into three sectors. The first, linked to Marina East, extends the central business district, poised for commercial and residential ventures. The middle, aligned with East Coast Park, promises premium water and recreation initiatives. The last, connecting to Changi Airport and Terminal 5, propels the waterfront and Changi Business Park 
aiding Changi's evolution into a logistics and aviation hub. Yet the grandeur of Long Island comes with a caveat, mirroring the extensive reclamation of Marina Bay, a colossal 360-hectare mega-project that spanned over two decades. The forthcoming Long Island project, with its scale and complexity, promises to be a patient pursuit, demanding time for meticulous planning and execution that is likely to take decades. Navigating the path of progress often encounters the inevitable crossroads where environmental conservation meets development aspirations. The proposal for the Long Island Reclamation Project in Singapore triggers a crucial question. Can progress coexist harmoniously with the marine environment it inevitably impacts? Decades of reclamation works along Singapore's eastern coast have left an indelible mark on the marine ecosystem. The toll is evident. A loss of 60% of the coral reefs, once thriving with unparalleled biodiversity. The 1966 East Coast Reclamation Scheme, which took two decades to reclaim 1,525 hectares of land, played a significant role in this destruction of marine habitats. Now, as the Long Island project looms on the horizon, concerns arise about the potential fallout for marine life. The prospect of increased sediment and pollutants entering the waters poses a threat to the remaining coral reefs, especially in the southern islands, the last bastions of Singapore's coral diversity. The fragility of these ecosystems becomes all too apparent, with climate change and coastal development casting ominous shadows over the future of the marine life around Singapore. Beyond environmental considerations, the Long Island proposal stirs apprehension among sea sports enthusiasts. While authorities reassure the community that the newly created reservoir can accommodate activities like canoeing and dragon boating, the fate of wind-based sports such as sailing, windsurfing and kite surfing remains uncertain. Initial images of the planned reservoir fuel concerns about its narrow expanse potentially limiting the scope for certain water sports. The crux of the matter lies in a holistic approach to address these concerns. Early engagement with nature researchers and non-governmental organizations becomes imperative to safeguard biodiversity, prevent habitat loss at East Coast Park, and preserve the pristine southern islands. Equally vital is consulting water sports communities to strike a balance between national security and Singapore's maritime activities. As the Long Island project advances, technical studies take center stage, involving extensive environmental and engineering assessments. The goal is twofold, to determine the feasibility of the conceptual reclamation profile and to devise innovative, cost-effective nature-based solutions that seamlessly integrate with Singaporeans' way of life. Interestingly, the backdrop to this mega-project reveals the need for a critical resource, sand. Singapore, in its half-century of independence, has waged an unwavering battle to expand its territory. The island city-state's coastline, sculpted through the import of vast amounts of sand, has not been without a controversy. Neighbors such as Malaysia and Indonesia, perturbed by Singapore's sand imports, have raised eyebrows. Watch this video to find out how Singapore's quest to reclaim land incurred the wrath of its neighbors.